Hello again, what we will do, we will create a RESTful web service using Spring Framework, a very basic one. This web service will accept HTTP GET requests and will return a JSON response. We will do this from zero. When I say from zero, it means that I just finished to install this virtual machine with Windows 10. It doesn't have Java nor the tools that we need for the job, okay? So we have to download and install JDK, Java development kit, 2. Download and install a code editor, we will use Eclipse, 3. Generate and download a Spring project, for that purpose we will use Spring Initializer, 4. Import into Eclipse and install the generated Maven project, we will create a Maven project using Spring Initializer, 5. Create a controller, not this one, a Spring controller, and finally 6. Run and test our web service. So let's do the step 1, download and install JDK. We go to this website and I will choose the latest version at the moment 14. I click here in JDK download and then here I go down and because I am using Windows I will choose Windows X64 installer. Okay, click here, I review and accept, download, save, I open the folder, download folder, I have here the file, double click for open the file, we click on yes, this window opens, we click on next, if you want you can change the destination folder, I will leave the default one, so I click on next, and then close. Let's go to the step number two, download and install code editor. We go to the Eclipse website and we choose here download 64 bit and again we click on download. Let me save, open the download folder, we have here Eclipse, double click on the file, this window opens, we have here several options, we will choose the first one, Eclipse IDE for Java developers. It already selected the JDK 14, we will keep the default installation folder, so install. Installation is completed, let's launch. This window opens for us to choose the workspace, we keep the default one, so we launch. And finally Eclipse opens, let me expand this, and this is it. Let's do the step number 3, generate and download a Spring project. We go to this website, this is the Spring Initializer, and these allow us, by selecting options here, to generate a starting point for our project, okay? By default default it has the project selected to be a Maven project, is what we want, about the language is selected Java, is ok, the Spring Boot we can let it to be 2.2.6, about the project metadata let's change this to be my example, about the artifact we can call this to be my web service, and about the description let's call this hello world, ok? The packaging can be jar, no problem, and about the Java version, since we downloaded the 14 version, we can select the 14, ok? In the right side, here in the top, we can add dependencies, so we click here, and we want to add one about web, this one, Spring Web, Build Web, including RESTful, applications using Spring MVC, ok? It will use a patch Tomcat as the default embedded container. We select this one and it appears here. If you want to add more, you click here and you select whatever you want, ok? Now we are good with this, we can click here in the generate and it will download a file. We open the download folder and we have here my web service. This is a zip file, we can right click on this and select extract all, and we select the folder where we want to extract this, we extract, 
and we have here the folder okay we open these and this is the starting point for our project okay let's do the step number four import into eclipse and install the generated maven project let me copy the path for this folder and let's go to eclipse let me close the welcome page and we go to the menu file to the option import and what we want to import we want to import a maven project so we select the folder maven and we expand this and we select the existing maven projects ok and we click on next this window opens we go here to the root directory and we paste here the path for the folder with the files then we need to refresh these and eclipse finds for us the file pom.xml it is already selected so we don't need to do anything else we just need to go here to the button finish and click on this now we let eclipse do whatever he have to do Eclipse just finished to import the project so we go here and we have here my web service we can expand these and before installing these let's see this pom.xml we open these let me hide these parts and hide these and by the way let's hide these so we can see all the code and as you can see this pom.xml have here information that it needs to install this project okay we have here for example dependencies this is very important so without this file Eclipse don't know what it must download or not for this project okay just for you to see that this file is very important so let me close these and let me expand the package explorer and let's install these so in the project my web service we right click on these and we select run as and then we select the option number seven maven install we click here and we let eclipse do the job and Eclipse just finished to install our project. And this is the important message, build success. After the setup, let's create a controller for our web service. So we go here to our project and we see the source slash main slash java. We can expand these and we see the package myexample dot my web service. Let's expand these and here we have a file my web service application dot java. This is a very important file. Let's hope just to see what it is and let's hide these this is a very small class okay but is a very important one why because it contains the main method this is the entry point for our application okay it just do one thing it calls the method run from spring application providing the class my web service application okay now let's do our controller we close this file and let me expand these again in this package let's create a new class right click on this package we choose new and we select the option class we give a name to the class let's call it greetings controller and we click on the button finish eclipse just created an empty class for us let me paste here a method so the class does something and the method that we have here is called greetings it will receive the permission name that is a string and also it will return a string the return string will be something like hello comma the name and an exclamation mark at this moment if we run our web service nothing will happen why because this class is a very normal class it is also known as a pojo for plain old java object one important thing here is having a class name that ends with controller doesn't make the class a controller so we need to add something else let me hide the package explorer so we have more space for our code and we need to make the greetings controller a controller for that we need to add an annotation called rest controller also we need to import from org dot spring framework dot web dot bind dot annotation 
annotation and finally dot rest controller with this greetings controller is now a spring controller but we still have a problem why because spring is not a wizard and spring doesn't know when it should execute the method greetings so we need to do something else let me go here and let's go a little down so we can see everything we need to add another annotation called get mapping why because we are mapping to a HTTP get request okay also for this annotation we need to provide a string that is the value of the mapping it will be a slash hello so every time you in the web browser type the address of our web service plus slash hello it will call the method greetings also we need to import this from somewhere like we did with rest controller let me copy this part and here let me paste we want to import get mapping now we still have one final thing to do let's go down and here at this moment spring knows that greetings controller is a controller also spring knows that the method greetings should be executed on a HTTP get request and that request will end with slash hello but spring still don't know how it will get the parameter name from the request so we need to do something else as you may guess we need to add another annotation let me go here and get some space for us to do the code so let's go a little down and here we add the annotation with the name request param okay this annotation will receive two parameters the first parameter will be the value that is equals to the string name and the second parameter is the default value that is equals to the string world and we have here something very very important to notice these two parameters have similar names but they have different purposes okay let me change this name to be just n and also let me put here a comment for you to understand this let's go a little down so we can see everything and here let's understand this the first parameter the value is informing spring that it should search for something called n in the query string this example you see we have here a query string with and then spring will assign the value mars to greetings parameter name this example in the other hand if spring don't find anything in the query string in this case we don't have a query string spring should assign the default value world to greetings parameter name this example okay now as you may guess we need to import request params so we go up and here in the imports I just paste here the code for that and let's do the final step step number six run and test our web service and let's run these so we go here to the package explorer right click on our project and we go to run as and then we will choose the first option Java application okay click here this window will open we will search for my web service application because it's the name of our application we choose this one and we click on ok then this window opens we allow access and if we expand this console we can see let's see here let's see what it says it says here that just started my web service application on port 8080 okay so we go to the web browser and we type localhost 8080 slash hello we hit enter and we get this result hello world because we didn't provide the n parameter we go here we put a question mark a n equals to mars hit enter and now we have here hello mars if you find this video helpful please give it a like and share with your friends it will help me back and this is not the end 
I was almost done editing this video when I noticed that we are returning a string not a JSON response and for that we need to return here an object so let's go down and here let me paste here the code for a very basic class that is called hello response it has a message that is a string also let's go here and we want to replace this line of code with this we create a hello response and we assign to the message of hello response our message then we return the new object also let me copy this and let's go here to the method and instead of returning a string we want to return a hello response and now you are guessing I think that we need to add another annotation you are right and wrong at the same time you are right because we need to inform spring that that it should convert the hello response object into a JSON representation okay and you are wrong because we are already doing that without knowing if we go here to the rest controller we can see in the documentation that this is a compound annotation okay it has the controller annotation it has the response body annotation it has the target and others let's see this response body this response body is is the one that is responsible for what our web service will return in this call okay and turns out that JSON is the default response okay I am just showing you these for you to understand that there is a lot of things behind the scene okay I will not go further because this is a beginner's guide okay now we can run this let me expand this part and let me expand this window I want to call your attention to this window here okay we go here to my web service right click on here run as java application we choose my web service application we say okay and it tries to run our application but unsuccessfully why it says here that the process is trying to listen to the port 8080 and the problem here is our previous example is still running and if we try to run again it will not work okay so let me close in this cross okay and in this window we have here a red button to terminate these so we click here terminate and now we can run our application again okay so right click again and run as java application my web service application okay and now the guy is running successfully we have here started at 8080 and we refresh this and now we have here the JSON response okay message hello Mars and finally this is the end if you have any suggestion for a future video or if you want me to do more videos about Java Spring please leave a comment don't forget to give a like to the video and share with your friends and as always thank you for watching